Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Barry Bickle. I'm the chairman of the Ponca City po Politics Committee, and I want to welcome you all. We have a great crowd. Thank you for the turnout. Uh, this is our uh, forum for the K County Sheriff's election or the gunfight at the OK Corral, so whichever. <laughs> I want to thank the city for the refreshments and for uh, hand, uh, the letting us use the facility. Normally this thing is set up to show on cable afterwards. That's not uh, going to work this time, but you can go to the City of Ponca City website and pull it up there. So if you have uh, friends that weren't able to come, they can do it that way. Uh, quickly, let me run through what's going to happen. Uh, each of the candidates will get up and have 10 minutes to introduce themselves and talk about why they're running for sheriff. Uh, then uh, we will <clears throat> have uh, questions from, from the audience that you put on the cards. Each candidate will have two minutes to respond to those questions. And we've got timekeepers over here. We have to do that because, you know, it's going to, we only have an hour. So uh, as you can, if you can do the math in your head like I did, if the candidates take their 10 minutes, half our time's gone. So we are gonna have time for about six, seven questions probably. So we have a group over here that's going through them to make sure we don't have duplicates, to combine them if we do. We're gonna do the best job to get a variety of questions out to the candidates, but we only have so much time. So uh, we'll, as we start the uh, uh, introduction of the candidates, they will come up, they'll do their 10 minute deal alphabetically, and then they'll each take turns, we'll rotate uh, who speak? Who answers the questions so that each person has to answer first one time. So, if we could start with uh, Tom Berg, please. You people are scary. First of all, I want to thank everybody for coming here today. I know this is uh, at lunch, basically, and everybody has an hour, and I appreciate the opportunity you guys have given me to talk to you. My name is Tom Berg. I began my law enforcement career January 1st of 1990 at the K County Sheriff's Department as a jailer. I was hired by Glenn Gwynn, Sheriff, and Marion Van Hoosen, Under Sheriff. During this time period, um, I had an opportunity to interact with, uh, obviously, inmates and um, wanted to further my career and be a deputy. January, or excuse me, June of 1990, I became a deputy sheriff uh, at the K County Sheriff's Department. I was assigned a uh, road uh, division, basically taking calls, interacting with people. Um, in 1991, I went to the Cleet Academy. And that same year, I also went to the uh, uh, Criminal Investigation Academy. During that time as Deputy Sheriff, I was assigned to investigations, to prisoner transports, to civil papers, uh, serving civil papers, to county warrants, um, to uh, taking calls. I was also assigned to the DA's, uh, District Attorney's Task Force. I worked crimes that occurred. I prevented crimes that I could and I tried to make a difference in people's lives, just like I'll do as your next sheriff. One thing that I did learn early in my career was the strong importance of building relationships with people that I was sworn to serve and protect. That would be going knocking on the door to do a welfare check, to going and talking to them and taking a report, or like I said earlier, trying to prevent a crime. All of this I took very personal, and I do today. In 1994, I was hired by Ponca City Police Chief Raymond Ham. I was hired as a patrol officer. During my 22 years plus with the city of Ponca City, I have served as a patrol officer, community policing specialist, West Side Project, school resource officer, a supervisor of patrol, and a detective. As a patrol officer, I worked the entire town of Ponca City Again, responding to calls, preventing and taking calls, and trying to make a difference in people's lives. The whole entire time I was building relationships with the people that I talked to on a daily basis. 
on the west side project I was lucky enough to be able to dedicate my entire time to a smaller area the smaller area being the west side project I got to know the people I got to know the problems having this information I was able to serve them better and use these philosophies that I do every day now when I became a school resource officer I worked at the middle schools of Ponca City I learned even more about law enforcement and the benefit of building relationships with the people you come in contact with daily. These relationships I have developed with the young people and their parents have truly made a difference in my career today. As a patrol supervisor, I learned about the dynamics of managing people and the importance of getting the work done proper. As a detective, I learn and am still learning today about how I can serve this community and make a difference for the positive. Every single day, I come in contact with people that I feel like I make a difference for the positive in their life, building strong relationships to the people I serve. During this time in my career, I realized the great opportunity I was given to help the youth in our community for the positive. I became a board member of the Northern Oklahoma Youth Services, a board member of Grand Central Station Teen Center, a board member and vice president of Ponca City Junior Baseball, and a baseball coach. I also became a board member of Ponca City New Dambucks, where later I became Ambuck of the Year and uh, Project Manager of the Year. I also served as ABC Race Association President and Park Manager. I also became very active in the Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge 103. I was co-chair for the Shop with a Cop program during the Christmas time we did every year. I was also one of three officers that started the FOP Police Explorer post, uh, which is giving youth in our city an opportunity to see what we do on a daily, daily basis when they have an interest in law enforcement. I also started the Fraternal Order of Police High School Scholarship Fund, giving seniors an opportunity to advance their education. As I did this, these programs, I did it with the idea of giving back to the community. I feel it's very important that as your next sheriff, you be connected to the people that you serve and protect every day. That is something I don't take lightly. The only reason I mentioned everything that I've done, which I have a tough time with because I'm not that kind of guy, but I want everybody to know the dedication that I've put in to this community and the dedication that I will continue as your next sheriff. I feel the next sheriff of K County must be connected to the people he serves. As your next sheriff, I want to go back to the basics. I feel we need more rural patrol in the county. I also feel that we need to divide the county up into manageable areas where the deputies are connected to the people they serve and protect. I feel that just like I've said earlier with the experience I have on the West Side Community Policing Program, you interact with people, you interact with businesses, you know what the problems are, you know the issues, and you're able to solve them. You're not an occupying army that responds to a call and then leaves. You're part of the community. You're part of their lives. And that's what I want to do as your next sheriff. I believe that it's very important that we create strong relationships, partnerships with the citizens. I will continue the community policing philosophies that I have been part of for over 20 years that have worked very successful. I will start a K County Sheriff's Academy modeled after the Ponca City Citizens Academy. I have been part of that academy for over 20 years. It's very successful. It builds strong relationships, strong partnerships, and gives all the citizens an opportunity to see what we do in law enforcement every single day. I then want to start a citizens volunteer group like the Extra Eyes program which is uh, uh, basically what, excuse me, it's what Ponca City does, the Extra Eyes program. I want to model it after that. Very successful program, volunteer base. I will work with all law enforcement agencies in Kay County. I will have monthly meetings with all the chiefs. We will do what needs to be done for the greater good of the entire county. 
I will create juvenile interaction programs, such as straight talk, positive choices, and character first, among some other things. Adult crime interaction programs, targeting adults 18 to 30. I want to work closely with the K County Detention Facility. They are already doing some of these programs. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I want to put our resources together and try to make a difference in the lives. Senior fraud programs, educating and protecting the elderly has to be something that we take very serious. Every single day as we're sitting in this room right now, somebody is being a victim. They've worked their entire lives and their, everything they have is being taken by one phone call. I want to be strong in that area and I will as your next sheriff. I will commit more manpower and more resources to combating illegal drug activity in our county. I feel this is a huge problem that we are dealing with. Everything from property crime to assaults to everything in between is connected to that. It's not just a K County problem, but it's an Oklahoma problem. And the, the direction I want to take it with the knowledge I have will create a plan that everybody in Oklahoma will look at. Over the last 26 years, I have dedicated my life to serving you and your families to make K County a better place to live and raise your family. This is my calling. This is not just a job. I love this county and the people who work and play here. Not one of these ideas I've talked about, not one of these philosophies I've discussed is a campaign idea. This is something I have lived my life by serving this community and in Kay County for over 26 years. Professionalism, transparency, cooperation, community policing, responsiveness to those that we serve. These are not campaign promises. These are things that I've done every day and I will continue as your next sheriff. I have been living, developing my entire career. They're based in relationships that I have forged through 26 years. They are also based in success and failure. I have learned from over the last 26 years that I can make a difference in people's lives and I will continue. I promise you, if you elect me as your next sheriff of Cade County, I will tirelessly work for you to make sure that you made the right choice. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Now we'll hear from Brian Herbert. My name is Brian Herbert, and anybody that has been following my campaign the last three months knowing that I'm very vocal and out and just speak my mind. You know, I can sit here and tell you about all my qualifications. For the past 22 years, I have served as a law enforcement officer. I've, and during that time, I've served in all aspects of law enforcement. <laughs> Patrol officer, canine, undercover narcotics, worked all the way through the ranks to chief of police. I currently serve as a criminal investigator with the Osage Nation Attorney General's Office. I'm a graduate of three law enforcement academies, Oklahoma, Texas, and Kentucky. I'm also a graduate of the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drug Academy. I've attended Central Texas College, Beckfield College, and the University of Kentucky. During my law enforcement career, I've been given national awards in reference to the Legion of Honor and recipient of the Law Enforcement Purple Heart. Before I decided to run for sheriff, I needed to know what is going on in the county right now. I've only lived here for the past six years. Doesn't, I haven't been here all my life. I wanted to know the real issues. And from what I've seen from my expectations that you want as your next sheriff, I'm going to reduce the crime in this county by over 5% my first year. And by doing so, we're going to conduct pro-law enforcement activities out in the county. I'm going to get the deputies out of the city limits and out there in the county where they belong. The citizens out there in the county has lost their faith with our county government and with our county law enforcement. 
And I am going to restore that faith as your next sheriff. I'm going to restore the integrity and the professionalism. I'm tired of reading in the paper. I'm tired of seeing it for myself. How we are a waste, fraud, and abuse of our taxpayer dollars. And I'm going to eliminate that waste, fraud, and abuse. We're going to start using our assets right here in Kay County. I am going to implement one of the hottest topics of discussion during this whole campaign has been my cross-deputization agreements. I am going to use, I'm going to be able to utilize 18 extra deputies to assist us out in the county because we all know that we don't have the money for extra manpower. I am bringing a solution to this problem without it costing you one extra dollar out of your pockets. And we're going to use the assets of $1.3 million or more we are already allowing the tribal nations to help us with infrastructure, building our bridges, assisting on road pavements, providing our citizens with jobs. Why aren't we allowing them to assist us in our law enforcement duties? That is what I'm going to do. I'm going to eliminate the safe havens that are going on between jurisdictions. We are going to cooperate, and by working with all law enforcement agencies, we can make it a difference right here in Kay County. Another problem has been a sex offender registration program. I'm going to implement the new federal standards. I wrote the new laws. I wrote the new legislations. The state of Oklahoma is not requiring the counties, the city municipalities, to implement these new rules and regulations. They stated that it's going to cost them too much money to implement these new standards. That is putting our children at risk. Instead, they decided we're going to take the penalties. Penalties that's costing you, the taxpayers, millions of dollars in federal funds being able to be assessed here in our county. By better tracking, by better tracking, monitoring the convicted sex offenders, we can provide our citizens and our children a safer place to live. There is a notification system that I want to put into place that it's like a weather alert. When a convicted sex offender is required to uh, register within our no uh, jurisdiction, you're going to be sent out notifications that they are here. That same notification goes to our schools, our daycares, and our public facilities, and even your home. These are the things that I'm going to do as your next county sheriff. I am asking for your support and your vote between now and June the 28th, because this election is very important, ladies and gentlemen. We can continue going down that same road, the same path as we've been taking for the last four, eight years. It's time for a change. It's time for a new voice and a new vision for the citizens of Kay County. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Now we'll hear from Steve Kelly. Thank you very much. I really appreciate and I am very honored to be standing in front of you as one of the candidates for sheriff. This is something that I've been wanting to do for several years. When I returned from the military, I was undecided what I wanted to do. It was either a fireman or a policeman. That's where I was at. I went and did all the training for the firemen. I enjoyed that type of work. Helped my dad start a volunteer fire department. And then I went to the ball field here in Ponca and they asked me to climb the ladder truck. I said, are you crazy? And I couldn't do it. I don't like heights. So here I am. My name is Steve Kelly. I was born and raised here in Ponca City. I've lived here in Kay County all my life. I went to school. I've worked here. This is a, one of the best counties, if not the best county in the state of Oklahoma, I believe. After I graduated high school, I attended NOC in Tonkawal, and then I joined the military. In 1988, I went to the United States Navy. 
and served until 1992. I'm a veteran of Desert Shield, Desert Storm. I'm a proud, proud veteran of the military. I know what it takes to serve our country and I know what it takes to serve this county. I started my career in law enforcement at the Blackwell Police Department in 1998. At the Blackwell Police Department, I started off just as a patrolman, and then I started, as a, uh, a couple of years later, I started a uh, field training officer. I've trained numerous officers. I've got the experience, I know what it takes to teach the people our next generation of law enforcement. In 2003, I started at the K County Sheriff's Office as a field deputy. As a field deputy, back then we had to handle all of our own cases. I was fortunate enough to learn quite a bit. I have worked cases involving anything from a petty larceny all the way up to a homicide. I have a proven ability in my case investigations, a proven ability in the court and the prosecution of the criminals. In 2007, I was promoted to undersheriff by Sheriff, Sheriff Everett Van Usen. At that time, we were going through some pretty hard times at the old jail. We had to make a decision if we wanted to improve the jail that we had or build a new one. And we left that up to the citizens of Kay County, what, how we needed to move forward. And I'm happy that they decided we needed a new jail. I was instrumental in the design and the completion of that jail. When we moved out there in 2010, we started to work on new policy and procedures for the sheriff's office. We applied for grants. We received over $300,000 in grants in the last 10 years. And with those monies, we were able to upgrade all of our equipment. We were able to provide training to our deputies. So now we're at that point at the sheriff's office. We were down here at the bottom of the hill. Now we're at the top. So ideas that I have is to be your next sheriff is to start the relationship process. Make sure that our relationship is good with the community and the other law enforcement agencies. I have always had a good working relationship with all the law, law enforcement officers in Kay County. Not only Kay County, but the surrounding agencies as well. I know what it takes to work together and work as a team. We need to start hitting door to door in the rural communities and start talking to the public. Get some ideas from them. Educate the public. Let them know what we do at the sheriff's office. Since this campaign started, just listening to the public, uh, a lot of them don't know what we do at the sheriff's office. And I think education would go a long ways in helping us prevent crime if they knew what we did and we can get their help. Everything starts with an idea. Everything. We've got, the, we've got good ideas and I'm ready to implement those ideas start a community policing pro program. We want to start a Sheriff's Citizens Academy. And we want to start, continue the fight on drugs. Everybody knows we have a drug problem in Kay County. It's everywhere. We have people that have problems with the abuse of drugs. We put a lot of those people in jail, but we need to focus on the people that are bringing the drugs in and selling it and provide assistance to the people that have the abuse problems. 
Our jail is getting full. We had over 270 people this morning up there. 190 of those are repeat offenders. So we have to do something about that. We have some very good programs that the jail board has started up there, some reentry programs, and I want to assist them and join them in continuing with those. I have the experience and the drive and the dedication and the professionalism and the proven accountability as your undersheriff. I feel that I have proven that and as your next sheriff, I will continue that. We'll always have an open door. Anybody that has any questions or comments or suggestions, I'm always, will always make myself available to you. And I would appreciate your support and vote Tuesday. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Now we've had the introductions. We will now uh, start with the two minutes from each candidate on the question, responding to the question. Uh, we're going to go, we'll start with uh, Brian will answer first, then uh, Tom, then Steve, then we'll rotate those around. So. Okay. <laughs> Okay, please explain your idea of community policing and your experience in community policing. How will you implement rural slash community policing and what are your thoughts as to why it is not happening now? I'll leave this up here. Community policing. Community policing. I've been hearing that word way too much during this election. Community policing has been around for generations, year after year after year, century after century. That's getting out there and actually doing your job as a law enforcement officer. That means you're going to get out there. You're, when you go and eat, you're, you're doing community policing. You're talking to the citizens while you're eating. Whenever you're actually going on a call, you're actually community policing. There is nothing else that you can develop other than being out there in the community doing your job as law enforcement officers. That is community policing. Is there anything I can implement? Sure. Getting our deputies out in the community, getting our deputies out in the county, and start doing their job as that they're paid to do. And by increasing that community policing is by putting more officers on the streets, and that's what I'm going to do. We can just continue on talking about how we're going to uh, solve the drug problems and solve the thefts and burglaries and property crimes. Well, that's all based upon your community, uh, com uh, community policing. But, you know, whenever you lose your faith w uh, from your citizens, then they're not giving you the information that you need to solve crimes. Because if they think that you're not going to assist them or you're not going to take their complaints serious, then they're not going to take you serious. And we're seeing that all over, not just here in Kay County, not just here in the state of Oklahoma, but across the nation. Most of our law enforcement officers are great law enforcement officers. you got 55 dedicated men and women right here at your Ponca City Police Department that are providing you that type of service. They are providing you that type of service is out in the community, and they're handling their jobs here. And I commend them on that. But it's time for our deputies to get out of this city and out there in the county. That's community policing. Thank you. Brian is right, community policing has been around forever. We do it on a daily basis. I have been doing it for 18 years that I've been in law enforcement. Every day we come to work, on the way to work, we stop and get something to drink on the way to the office, we stop and talk to people, that's community policing. When we go handle calls, that's community policing. But you have to be able to stop and listen to the people. Listen to their ideas and implement those ideas. 
the citizens of Kay County have some very good ideas to where the sheriff's office needs to go in the future. And we just need to listen. And that's what community policing is all about, just listening. We need to listen or join with the various cities within the county, the city leaders, the chiefs of police. Join with them in the fight of, with crime. Every day as the sheriff, I will, got to have spent a certain amount of time in the office, but I don't like to be behind a desk all the time. I never have been able to do that. I will be out in the public listening. When we work crimes, I, w I would like to follow up on those crimes. That's what community policing. Everybody has good ideas. I think as long as you stay in touch with the public, it will better our sheriff's office. Thank you. In 1997, the Oklahoma Regional Community Policing Institute was created. I was the first member of the Punk City Police Department to go through that program. <clears throat> I was very proud and very blessed that I had that opportunity. As I said in my opening statement, this is not a campaign promise. This is nothing that I've just woke up in the middle of the night and come up with. This is what I've been doing every single day of my career at the Ponca City Police Department and even did it on a daily basis at the K County Sheriff's Department. But it wasn't called community policing. It was called going and talking to people, <coughs> excuse me, and making a difference in people's lives for the positive. <coughs> of course, I don't have my water. So... The bottom line is, as your sheriff, I will implement these programs that I've already been doing at the Punk City Police Department. Strong partnerships, strong bonds amongst, amongst the public. You have communities that have no law enforcement coverage other than the K County Sheriff's Department. They need to know who their sheriff is. They need to know who the deputies are because having that bond, they will communicate and they will want to talk to you and they'll tell you about the guy across the street from the school selling dope, but they won't if you don't go talk to him. Not an occupying army where you show up when you get a call, but going to the school at Kildare and talking to the kids, going to Bremen and talking to the kids, trying to make a difference for the positive in people's lives. All of this is going to give you tremendous exposure and people are going to want to be on board because it's something positive. Everything is negative that I read, but it has to be positive and it can be turned around by getting involved and making a difference. And I, as your next sheriff, will do that. I've proven my track record. I've proven that I do that every day when I go to work. Thank you. I'd sure appreciate your vote June 28th. Thank you. Okay, Steve, you're first. Uh, are you in favor of cross-deputizing? As the undersheriff for the past 10 years, I've had the experience of working with uh, the various tribes we have in this county. They have good law enforcement. We've had some ups and downs in the past, I'm not gonna lie. Am I in favor of cross deputization? It simply said no. And I haven't been for the past 10 years. Today, we have a new law that's been signed in to, by the governor. I believe it starts in November, uh, I'm not for sure. But the tribes, it gives the tribes the power, if they have the proper training, to arrest non-tribal, on tribal land. It furthers their jurisdiction. So in my opinion, there is no need for us to cross deputies, deputize, cross commission with the tribes. We have five tribes in this county. 
There has been success in other counties, but those counties only have maybe one tribe. Once I signed my name as sheriff, once I signed my name to that commission card and give to another agency, I'm responsible. I'm responsible for every citizen in Kay County, for what they do, how they handle themselves. And just the experience and what we had in the past, I'm not prepared to do that. I'm not prepared to put this county at risk of a lawsuit or a bad name. We've had uh, mutual aid with others. It's worked just fine. We have a decent working relationship with what we have right now. Thank you. Are you in favor of cross-deputizing? Um, it's kind of funny because everywhere we go, we get asked this question, so getting good at it. I'm really honest with everybody, and I always will, and I'll never change, even if as your next sheriff. I have some concerns about cross-dep. Number one concern I have is I'm not hiring them. I'm not doing their background. I don't know what kind of officer they are. I don't, care. I don't know their history. I'm not saying that that would keep me from doing it. That, to me, is just one of the cons. The pros is obviously there's more boots on the ground. There's more people out there in the county. I hear this uh, constantly that uh, Brayman sees nobody but the Caw Nation. They don't see the Sheriff's Department. If you go talk to people in Brayman, they're totally for it because they see Caw Nation driving through their city limits four to five times a day, going to the casino, going to the other properties that they own. So if you talk to them, they're all for it. The main thing that I think as your next sheriff is we all need to sit down and talk. There's no communication amongst the tribes. Um, I have talked to tribal members. I have talked to uh, police officers at the tribes. And the biggest thing I hear is there's no communication. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you I will or will not, but I do want to talk to everybody. I think there's so much positive we can get out of the tribal law enforcement. They're dealing with the same problems we are. I don't want to say, no, we're not going to do it without everybody sitting down to the table and trying to see if we can come up with something that works for everybody. Thank you very much. Does anybody want to take a guess how I feel about it? <laughs> Listen, in reference to the liability issue that some are talking about, there is no liability issue with the county. What that stands for is in that agreement, there is a line stated, limited waiver of sovereign immunity. That there decreases the liability of the county because if the, if the tribal nation officer acts outside the scope of that, that agreement, he can, will, and pretty much will be sued, and so will that tribal nation. But why are we talking about liability? Because if we're training together, we don't need to worry about the lawsuits. And in reference to the reason why the sheriff doesn't want to, well, that's their opinion. But the sheriff does have the ability to determine who gets his commission card and who don't. You're going to know the officer's training. You're going to know his background. You're going to know by working with them the policies and procedures of who this officer is. And that's where you come up with the cross-deputization agreement. Number two, as your sheriff, I know for a fact that I cannot execute any kind of contracts between, for the, on behalf of the county. This is all going to have to be done through the Board of County Commissioners. I'm going to take all the research, all the pros, all the cons, all the policies and procedures, all the training to them and allow them to make that ultimate decision. But I'm going to be all for it. Thank you.
Okay, Tom. Uh, what are your views on open carry? I think that means guns, not alcohol. But. <laughs> Very say alcohol. Um, open carry. I uh, I'm all for it. I I believe that we need training. Um, officers every day we go we do training. We do training at Cleet. We do training through our police department. We do specialized training. I as far as open carry, I think that. Um, I have a concern with somebody who carries an open weapon standing in line at Walmart and there's a guy behind him that does know how to take the gun from him and does know how to use it and the guy standing in line with the gun doesn't have any training to protect. We as law enforcement officers are trained in how to do gun retention. That's just beat into us. Even me being out of the academy as long as I have, it's second nature. It is for all law enforcement. That would be the only thing that I would be concerned about. As far as uh, the open carry, um, I think it's a determent. I mean, if a bad guy's gonna do something, he sees you standing there with a gun, he's probably gonna think twice. Um, I believe it is our rights um, to bear arms, and I, I don't have a problem with that, but I do have a concern on the, on the uh, no training. Thank you. I'm all for the open carry too. There's been a lot of questions during this uh, campaign in reference to the Second Amendment rights. And people are kind of worried that the government is going to come in and take their guns. I'm not going to allow the federal government to come in with their watered down amendments to the Constitution and force them on our communities. Just not going to do it. You know, tr with training, I still don't have a problem with that. W that's where we can come into play in reference to law enforcement. You know, if they're wanting to open carry, let's go for it and, and make sure that the citizens are getting the proper training. And just remember, you know, in reference to your Second Amendment, if you're afraid that they're going to worry about uh, taking your guns, they're going to have to violate one more of your constitutional rights, and that's the Fourth Amendment one, unreasonable search and seizures. So... If they come and try to get your guns, they're going to have to go and get your uh, Fourth Amendment rights, too. So, no, I'm all for the, uh, the uh, open carry. Thank you. Yeah, I'm in favor for the open carry. At the sheriff's office, they come up and do the concealed handgun permits. I don't know how many we do, but it seems like we probably – do fingerprints for those at least 12, 12 to 15 a week, it seems like. Uh, I'm all for open carry. Like Tom said, it, it's a deterrent. But however, you want to make sure you have that person that's carrying that weapon is trained. You don't want something to break out into a concert or a Walmart or anything like that, and he's not properly trained, and he shoots the wrong person. So that's where we come in play. We just built a, or we are in the process of finishing our new training facility for firearms. Once that's complete and as the next sheriff, I want to open that up to the public and offer training at our training facility. We have a firearms instructor. I want to work with uh, the Chief Bohan here in Ponca and see if we can join together and, and help with education on firearms. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, Brian, your first. If you could make only one change within the department, what would it be and how would you accomplish it? One change, boy, whew, that's a lot. One change. 
eliminate the fraud, waste, and abuse. Point blank, that's point and simple. Because without any funds, we can't operate a sheriff's department. We just can't. So that's what I would change and how I'd eliminate it is not doing it. Operate within our policies and procedures. Operate within the monies that are given to us and appropriate, appropriated to us by the Board of County Commissioners and use them for those purposes only. And that's how I would change that. I mean, it's just plain simple. I'm, in, I'm just not going to violate state law by operating outside the county, providing security for a pipeline and say it's a mutual aid agreement or saying it's under contract. No, no, we was, per, we was using taxpayer dollars to do that. My only question is, is how much we lost doing it. And so I'm going to change all those aspects and we're not going to do that any longer. Thank you. Changes. I don't think we need to change anything. We've worked very hard what we have at the sheriff's office. County government, it takes a lot longer than most governments in the state. Uh, we tend to move a little slower. Uh, it's not because we want to. It's because we're bound or held up by certain things. But we've come a long ways at the sheriff's office in the past 10 years. I don't want to change. I want to improve. We need to make improvements. And we're in a position to do that now. Improvements like Starting the town hall meetings within the rural communities within Ponca City, Blackwell, Tonkwell, Newkirk. Get that training that we need, further our training, working with the other agencies and working with the community. Just like we talked about the community policing, getting out, going door to door, be more involved in the public. We need to be more involved with our children at the schools. It's real simple to get, just by going into the schools and walking down the halls in uniform when the kids are out of recess or going from class to class and they just get to see that police officer or that deputy, they stop and talk, that goes a long ways. And that's what I want to do. I want to improve. We don't need to make change. Thank you. <clears throat> One change that I would make in the department, I've said it about every time I've come up here, we need to get back to the basics. We need to get back to the rural communities, we need to get back to the responsibilities of the sheriff. There is so much positive that we can do in the citizens' lives in our county, uh, just not in Ponca City, Blackwell, in other towns that have municipalities, but in the, the towns that we're in charge of, that we're supposed to be there. We're supposed to do positive things. We're supposed to interact with the children. When I was a deputy, uh, I did all this. It wasn't, I didn't even know what community policing was, you know, it's just what I did. Um, these kids will talk to you. These kids will tell you things. Uh, they'll tell you things that their parents don't want them to tell you. Uh, mommy and daddy are smoking dope. Mommy and daddy are selling dope. So trust me, you know, you can always tell if you're in the right direction when the parent keeps the kid from you. And this is things that I have personal experience on that I've done every single day of my job since I've been at the Punk City Police Department even before. I was a school resource officer. I was a community policing officer on the west side. I've done all this. I know this works. I've proven it works and I will continue it as your next sheriff. People will help you. All you have to do is prove to them you genuinely want to make a difference in their life for the positive, and they will help you. Businesses will come out and support you. Uh, there was all kinds of, of grants and support, and I know, you know, we hear about the budget this, budget that, but you know what? People will help you. You have to ask. If they think you're doing something for the positive, they'll get on board, and that is definitely what I would change. 
Thank you. The uh, sheriff is held accountable to the people by vote, and therefore he must hold his commission deputies accountable. If elected, you will inherit previously hired deputies. How will you review their performance and conduct? I have always held anybody that I've worked alongside to a high standard. Uh, when I became under sheriff, obviously I became one of the ones that hired and fired. When we were at the old jail, I cannot tell you how many people that we have went through at the jail, and it's for various reasons. So I have the experience, I know what it takes to be a good deputy, a good law enforcement officer. I know what it takes to lead somebody in the right direction. The deputies that we have at the sheriff's office right now, I was a huge part in hiring or training or working alongside every, each and every one of the ones that we have now including the support staff. I feel that the ones that we have right now are outstanding law enforcement officers. Are we perfect? No, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. Mistakes. We need to learn. There's training we need to continue with. But as the sheriff, if somebody steps outside those boundaries they'll be disciplined I'm a I've always been fair I like to listen to both sides make sure I'm making the right decision and that's what a good sheriff should do he shouldn't just listen to one side he needs to listen to both sides get all the information then make your decision from there thank you Reviewing deputies' performances and conducts. I, uh, like I've said many times, I was a deputy. I know exactly what the job entails. I know exa exactly what thought process is going through every one of these deputies right now during this election year, because I went through it. I know exactly what they're going through. The bottom line is everybody needs to be held to higher standards in law enforcement. I don't care if you're a municipality or if you're a deputy sheriff. I feel as your sheriff, I need to do the best I can f with what I have to work with, meaning budget, meaning the deputies. I plan on keeping everybody. I don't plan on getting rid of anybody. Let's just get that aired out, okay? The bottom line is, is that everybody needs more training, whether it's at the sheriff's department or it's at the PD. I have talked to different agencies about doing uh, training together. Uh, the tribes have lots of money that they're willing to work with and do training with. I feel that's very important. I also feel that me as the leader of these gentlemen and ladies that are the support staff, we definitely need to talk about things that we need to do. Not everybody agrees with what is going on in day-to-day -day operations, but it needs to be for the betterment of the community and the, the county. And the bottom line is, is more training, more experience, more knowledge uh, from the sheriff on down is what it's gonna take. And I will do that and I will be that sheriff. Thank you. Well, you know how rumors get started during elections, don't you? I'm not going to get rid of any of them either. I believe there are great deputies that are working for our county. Unfortunately, they just hadn't had the proper leadership. 
And that's the way I feel about that. I'm going to reevaluate each and every deputy that's there, determining their strengths, determining their weaknesses, and build upon that strength. Let it work for us. We're going to be operating under a lot of new policies and procedures. And if they want to conform to the policies and procedures, well, that's fantastic. Then they'll continue on working with the K County Sheriff's Department. If they don't, then I don't want them working there. Plain and simple. I am going to bring in one person with me, and that's my undersheriff. I have that right and that obligation to do so that shares the same views and the same priorities as I do. So that way we can move the, the Sheriff's Department in the direction it needs to go. So for all you deputies out there that are here today, you have a position within the Sheriff's Department. And we're all going to work together. If you don't want to work for me, that's okay. But I wish you, I wish you would to give you an opportunity and give me the opportunity because none of you know me. I've never worked with any one of you. So give me that opportunity. Thank you. Okay, this is the last question. We're uh, about out of time, and it's kind of unique because we're going to say, in one sentence, <laughs> what sets you apart from the other candidates? Tom, Brian, and Steve, in that order. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's, wow, one sentence. See, usually I get asked that, but there's no one sentence thing. Um, I am a very patient man and willing to do whatever it takes to do the right thing for the betterment of K County. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your support June 28th. <laughs> I am the only candidate that lives in the county. Well, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Can we leave out commas and all that good stuff? I never was good at English, so. I have the experience, drive, dedication, professionalism, integrity, and accountability to be your next sheriff, and I promise you I will continue with that. Not just for the next four years, but I want to be your sheriff for the next 12 to 16 years. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. I'd like to thank each of the candidates. I think you did a great job. I mean, it's not a... It's uh, obviously not the first time they've done this. So it's a... Uh, I think you all have... Uh, keep in mind that the sheriff will be elected next Tuesday and uh, unless we have a runoff because all the uh, candidates are uh, in... Republican Party. So thank you all for coming. And if you'd like to see this later, you can look it up, Ponca City uh, website, and key it up that way. Thank you. <laughs>